Well, good morning, church. It's good to be here with you. I hope you are all doing well and staying healthy. Uh, Truman here. Um, it's an it's an honor just to just to come to you today and, and have a little word. Um, a lot of times um, when I think about something I want to share, it's kind of something I'm going through in my own personal journey. Um, so the last few weeks, I've been thinking about prayer. Um, you know, been trying to pray a lot. There's a lot going on in the world, and um, you know, I've, I've gone to the scriptures a couple times to to think about how I'm praying, and you know, if I'm doing it right. You know, I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way to pray. Um, it's it's our communication with our with our heavenly Father, and that's the most important thing. But I did dive a little deeper and uh, find a little content, a few scriptures that I wanted to share with you all. So with that, you know, why don't, why don't we pray? I'll pray for us and, and open it up a little bit and then uh, share just a few scriptures with you all and, and hopefully it'll, it'll bless you and help you on your walk. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for um, the opportunity to come to you um, as a body of believers through this, um, this technology that we have that we can share. Um, Lord, I just, I'm, I'm so thankful that we can uh, come to you personally and, um, and communicate with you in, in prayer. And I know um, that, that you hear us, Lord. So just uh, bless our time here. Lord, help my words um, come from you, Lord, and, uh, and bless your people. Lord, I ask these things in your holy name. Amen. So again, church. Uh, the power of prayer is just it's there's there's no end to that um, just what that can accomplish and especially you know if we share with other believers you know e either a thanksgiving or or a need that we might have and if they're praying at the same time we're praying it's just it's just amazing you know Christ uh, he desires a relationship with us, and, and prayer is just a is just a way to communicate with him. It's probably you know the most powerful tool that we have. People put a lot um, of emphasis on on how we pray, and and I don't believe that's important. And there's some scriptures here that um, you know I'm going to share with you. It's it's really just our communication with our Father. Um, it's it's part of obedience um, that, that we would come to him um, but the Holy Spirit is there to kind of interject uh, the Holy Spirit knows what we need in advance of, of us expressing that but but just the just the time out of our schedule to communicate um, our needs and our and our Thanksgivings with with our father is is what's important here so <clears throat> I just want to share just a few verses I've probably got six or eight here and um again they they're ones that you you're probably definitely familiar with um but if we look at uh first thessalonians uh chapter 5 uh verses 16 and 8 16 through 18 it says rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of god in Jesus Christ for you and this is Paul bringing that to us um, if we look at Jeremiah uh, chapter 29 verse 12 when you call on me and come and pray to me I will listen to you our Lord God says in Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 if my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and heal their land if our nation if all the nations um, of, the, of the world would do that what what a different place it would be uh, that uh, that just rings out to me so much especially in our in our time right now uh, if we look at Psalms um, 102 uh, verse 17 he will respond to the prayer of the destitute 
he will not despise their plea. You know, prayer prayer can be when you're when you're at your lowest. You know, when you're uh, full of sorrow, full of some sort of grief or guilt, um, you're just down and out. You're destitute. Uh, pray to your Lord. He he he'll he he will rescue you, no matter what shape you're in, what what circumstance you're in. He um, loves you and desires to bring you out of that pit, that um, that spot that you're in. He, he's going to help you with that. Psalm one forty one, uh, verse two, the psalmist says, "May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the uplifting of my hands be like the evening." sacrifice you know the lord loves prayer the lord loves that that communication as we've heard it's a sweet incense to him um it, it is it is like a sacrifice you know he desires that communication and that relationship with us Romans says be joyful in hope be patient in affliction be faithful in prayer and finally uh probably one of the most common, I'm sure all you know this, Philippians 4, 6 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. That's one of my, my life verses, I guess. I just um, I recall that oftentimes when I'm in trouble or, or having some kind of uh, conflict. That just, to, just to pray, you know, in all circumstances. You know, we were, we were taught to pray... Um, Jesus tells us in, um, in Matthew and, and, and the other Gospels um, kind of uh, mirror some of the same language here, but <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6. And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. He tells about the hypocrites, you know, kind of praying in, in public. and um, You know, but they're, they're praying for, for their benefit. They want to be... Um, they want to be seen as as risen up to others, but I, I do think we can pray in public. I think if we're um, in a situation where, you know, I think we can pray no matter the circumstance. I think, um, but as long as we're coming to the Lord humbly, I think that's what's important here. I think we can we can certainly pray by ourselves, and I think we should have quiet time with with the Lord. Um, I think that's that's part of our obedience and part of our relationship. But I believe um, if there's an instance where where you're out in public and and something horrific is happening, or or if you just you know feel uh, a fellow brother or sister uh, in need of a prayer, I think you can put your put your arm around them and 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 call out to your father right there. But what's important is that we're we're humbly coming to the Lord. Um, in a situation we're not trying to lift ourselves up um, and make ourselves look bigger by, by praying to god that's the i think that's the the the, the key takeaway here okay verse seven in that says when you pray do not keep on babbling like the pagans for they think they will be heard because of their many words do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. That's the Holy Spirit. He is there for us. He, he intercedes uh, for us even before we um, call out to Jesus and ask Him for some of these things. Um, and it's, do not keep on babbling like the pagans. Again, they're trying to lift themselves up. Um, I think prayers can be long and eloquent if if uh if you feel led but i do think a simple cry out to jesus just saying his name is just as, as effective so i think you know sometimes when we pray uh have like a congregational prayer in church um some people might be hesitant to do that because of you know their words or or something like that but i think um just offering whatever words are are on us at that moment 
is um, I think the Lord loves that. So now we get into the meat here. Um, this is our uh, our prayer that we're um, that we're familiar with, starting with chapter nine. It says, "This then is how you should pray." Talking about the Lord's prayer here. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But when you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So that's it right there. That's, you know, that's that's our uh, our Lord's prayer that we say a lot of times. Oftentimes I start the day with this prayer. It's a it's a familiar prayer. I, you know, I can I can get out of bed kind of still sleepy and um and kind of cry out to Jesus in this way. It's a, it's just a way it, it's I find when I do this, it is a good way for me to start the day. Um and then, you know, subsequently during the day, I'll I'll pray in other ways that that might be a little more um emotional or or um you know kind of seated on on some some sort of thanksgiving or request there's there's a movement um that you might have heard of it's um praying at uh 1002 uh in the mornings um and that that's a call to uh to pray for that that comes from Luke uh chapter 10 uh, verse 2, it's about the harvest. It says, uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So that's um, at 10.02, if you can think about that. I've got an alarm set on my on my iPhone for 10.02 in the morning. And if I, if I have the opportunity when that goes off, I just I pray for the harvest um, and, and the workers. I pray for our church at that time. I pray for um, leaders in our church. I pray for our um, our denomination as a whole, just Christians as a whole. There are lots of people in this world that we need to reach. So I just uh, pray that our church leaders um, and our church congregations just be filled up and, and just be overflowing with the Lord's Spirit and that they would go out and try to reach others. There's another uh, movement, actually uh, our former pastor, Pastor Chris Police, told me about this one day but 1111 I looked this up there there's not really a exactly a Christian movement on this it's more of a kind of a secular thing it's 1111 you'll hear, hear people say sometimes you know make a wish Chris said if you see 1111 you know would you pray for me so I think 1111 is an opportunity to pray for your pastor uh, the pastor of the church needs our prayers you know needs our prayers personally in his walk he's leading us um, he's hearing um, some of the good times that, that we're having and some of the good work that we're doing from the kingdom, but he's also hearing about some of our heartaches and, and strife and our struggles. So at 1111, if, if, you, if you think about that, maybe pray for, pray for our pastor. Pray for um, some of our former pastors. Uh, pray for pastors around the world, that they just be um, strengthened, and lift it up and encouraged in the word and that they draw closer to the Lord so that they may lead us. So that's that's pretty much what I have for you today. I hope that you guys are doing well in your in your walk with Christ and your in your prayer um, life. Um, prayer is something that um, I found in, in my own walk. Um, it, it ebbs and flows a little bit. Uh, again, I've got a few things that I do pretty consistently, but um, I always feel better when I have more time of the day uh, to pray and just to connect with, with our, our Lord uh, and Heavenly Father. So I, I hope that I've encouraged you a little bit, maybe given you um, some practical ways that, that you can pray, uh, a few verses that might help you a little bit. I also heard, heard someone uh, one time break down pray into um, pause, rejoice, ask and yield as a way you know just a, a real simple format uh, for prayer so that's something that that's a tool that you might use as well pause 
Uh, just be still in front of God. Start out you know, your prayer by just rejoicing, just thanking Him for what He's done for you. You know, make your needs known to Him, ask, and then yield to God and ask Him how He might use you on that day or that moment or that week um, to further His kingdom. We do have um, a gathering for prayer coming up. Um, Pastor Scott and uh, Caitlin reminded us of this um, on Sunday, but on Saturday, October 24th at 6.30 p.m. here at the church, uh, they want just to have um, a gathering for prayer. Um, and what they have uh, listed here is John chapter 7, 37 and 38. It says, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So this is a way to, to get together as a congregation in prayer. They would like us to think about doing some fasting that day, um, either a meal or for the whole day, and to set aside 30 minutes before uh, we come to church to pray uninterrupted, if, if we can carve that time out. So church, I hope uh, this has been a blessing. I know these uh, Bible studies uh, have been a blessing to me for sure. Hope to see you all at the church very soon that we can get together and just uh, praise Jesus together.